All right, in this video, we're going to take a look at the PSD to 3D plugin, the pro version, and we're going to use custom vector masks. So we're going to do a blend of both. We should have some custom vector mas masks for the layers, and then we will also have the linear paths that are generated to create grid mesh. So one of the best ways I find to create a vector mask that's usable is to control click on the layer just to get started and to go modify and let's expand it. I don't know, we'll go by 20 and then go to paths and then create this path right here. It's similar to what the plugin does when it's creating its linear mesh path. But now what I can do is I can use my pen tool to just start drawing. Now I could draw like this and every time I press control click that will close the line. So this is one way to work. And this is a good way to work if you need some precision all the way to the end. And I don't wanna have to do my cross lines so slow. So for that, I'm just going to shift P and select the free form pen tool. And for that, I can just do these. Now, the thing you wanna pay attention to is that between each one of these intersections, the line is gonna be straight. So if you do a point from here to here, remember that it will cut like that. So wherever there's a big curve, you wanna make sure you have enough points to manage to create the curve that you want because we're only going to get linear data in between these intersections. When we hit an end right here, what you wanna do is put little corners here so that we can make a completed quad and keep this from collapsing into a triangle. And you'll see what that means in just a second. So the next thing I'll do is I'll draw a little curve here because I want the thumb to come off there. I'll do another one here. Now it's a little misleading. So actually let's maybe switch into the polygonal pen tool. This is more accurate to what we'll actually be, be experiencing is straight lines. You want to make sure you're kind of coming through the line. So it's important that your first curve that you make is a closed curve. If you don't use the method that I showed you to control click and select the layer, another way to create a closed curve is by starting to draw it and close the curve like that. If you have the free draw tool, like the free pen tool and you're like this, click control and let go and that will close the curve for you. So you just want to make sure that whatever curve you have housing everything is a closed loop. Okay, so I'm just going to quickly fill this up. Okay, and then I'm just gonna run a line through here. Actually, maybe I'll use the straight tool, just the control click to let go of a line. This one I'll run all the way through here. And then for these ones, I'll just press the pen and we'll just go like this to preserve these corners. Cool. All right. So if we want to be able to use this, all we have to do is click on this layer mask tool twice. And it looks like garbage, but this is going to be what's used to actually generate the polygonal mesh. So technically, we don't even need to run the exporter. If this is all we want to do and we just want to use the vector mask, we can just save this file and bring it straight into the importer and it will read it. So if I save this, I'll save it here and we'll call it like blob sheet a and I'll save that if we go into Maya and open up the generator and I'm going to import a new file there's blob sheet a I'll bring it in and what it's going to tell me is I have all these layers but there's nothing it can use on these ones here but it does have a vector mask it can use here so we'll switch to vector layer 0 0.01 might be good you this value you might want to drop really low if you have a lot of a lot of lines let's generate the mesh and see what it looks like so you'll see we have a couple of problems like this line merged here. We're missing these little corners here. So we need to increase the precision. So let's just go here and we will lower this number down. I usually like to put it as low as it can go and then just clean up if I have a bunch of extra vertices or things that I don't want. So it looks like it came in OK. And we can actually, if we want to, just generate the PNG for it. There we go. So let's go six. Cool. So the only thing I have is I lost these little corners here, but everything else looks okay. I feel like I could probably run a line straight through here because this should be a quad maybe. So let's just do that. We'll go back over here. And this can be a bit trickier to work with now that we've committed the layer, but it's not that hard. All I want to do is I'm going to go into my pen tool here and let's just draw a line straight through um, here. We'll go like that and we'll come out here. Great. 
and I'm con I control click to get away from it. Unfortunately, when you control click after it's a committed curve, it deselects. And the other thing I have is I missed drawing those little support structures, so I need to put two of those in. Okay, so now I can save. And then I'll just go back in here and we will reload the file, boop, and we will regenerate the mesh. Okay, there you go. So we now have the fixed mesh. Awesome. So that's, that's, the, that's really the basics. Now, if I want to use both methods, both the linear and this one, what I can do is, as long as I don't have a layer selected, so it's important not to have a layer selected, I can run the PS code on this. So let's run the code and we will call this blob sheet B. Okay. Now I didn't put any expansion on that, so let's run it again. I want an expansion on it. Blob sheet B, save. Yes. Okay. And there you can see it's generating our curves for us. Awesome. Export complete. So let's go in here. Just make a new file, PST to 3D generator, and let's import blob sheet B. Cool. So now what you see is on one of them, we have a vector layer available, which we'll drop down to here. And on the rest, we just have linear layers, which is totally fine. So let's just shift select these ones and put them to 500. This one we'll put down to one. Let's generate all of our meshes. Great. So you can see them all there. And let's just, uh, let's turn on our textures. So that's no problem. Let's just generate our PNGs. Oh, I just did it for the square. We need to do all of them. Let's do those three. Bum, 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 bum. Great. Let's go six. That's interesting. So sometimes what happens is when Photoshop or Maya is writing the PNGs, you can get an inverse alpha channel or sometimes something weird happens. So when this happens, this little bug specifically, uh, what you do is you take the layer that you that has a problem. And what I usually do is just alt click that layer and I go file, save as, and I just go into the blob sheet and I save a new PNG and we'll save this as square. Yes. Okay. And if everything works well, we'll go into the material. We should be able to just reload it. And that will fix any alpha, pr alpha channel problems that actually might have happened during the generation. So we'll do the same thing here. Control Shift S, PNG, and we'll drop it in Blob Sheet B, and this will be our circle. Not really sure. We don't really know why this happens to some files and not others, or to some layers and not others. But in general, it's a pretty easy fix. There you go. The only thing you want to watch for with the vector palettes is sometimes you can get a lot of a little few extra vertices here. So we might want to delete those away. On the whole, we're okay. So now what I can do if I want to is I can use smoothing on it. Let's just go like this. I'm just pressing W and we'll pull it off. We get a nice snaky deformation. So this is really the value and the power. This is one of the things of using the custom vector mask that you can do is because you can create a really beautiful curve down a, an object or a character or anything that captures the form really well. And you notice I can just grab one row of, of edges here and achieve that deformation that I'm looking for without having to use sculpting or anything like that. So this is a definitely a much better workflow if you're trying to get some pretty decent 2.5D, even 3D stuff, awesome. Okay, well, I think that that kind of covers the basics. Like if you want to keep updating this going back and forth, you can. Uh, I would suggest if you're happy with this, that you duplicate it and move it over. And therefore, if you want to generate another one, another arm, or you want to do some other things with it, that you can then generate that new mesh easily without losing what you've done over here. All right, cool. I hope that uh, that helps clarify some things and uh, I'm looking forward to see what you guys do with all this stuff.